about four weeks, so almost uh, one, one month extra. And um, my first week in office, Silver Lake Community, as I was campaigning, told me how screwed over they had been by the city when the, the library, the new library went to Echo Park, and was Silver Lake going to get their own? And our library bond had come in under budget and on time, so we actually had enough money left over to build an extra library, and I immediately jumped on that money and said, let's get it in Silver Lake. Well, cut to a few years later, and Barry Malofsky is the architect who wins our RFP. My apologies to everybody who lost, but he won. <laughs> um, and um, he um, designed a library, and we have seen this beautiful library come up, and we talked at the outset of that about how wonderful it would be, footsteps away from the reservoir that gives us uh, that neighborhood its name, um, footsteps away from the Neutra Studio and Neutra Drive, where many of those great case study homes are, uh, if we could have something that evokes our, our next articulation of what uh, California living and modernism in a civic structure would look like. But the problem is I'm so busy I never get to see it. So I went up there, it was totally closed off, the workers had gone away, and um, there's one guy in a pickup truck behind the gates watching telenovelas out of his pickup truck, and I asked him if it was all right if I came in. And he, he looked at me and I had a suit on, he's like, sure, didn't even ask who I was. <laughs> Let me in, took his, um, uh, his drill and undrilled the, the piece of wood that was covering the door and said, go ahead, and I went in there. Now, uh, security issues aside, a wonderful moment for a kid from Los Angeles to have an entire library before anybody's been in there to himself at sunset. And um, it's one of those rare moments where you recognize what the potential of architecture is in our lives. That we inhabit and we consume buildings, many of you design them, we dream of them. Architects are a lot like city council members. We have our ideal and then we have the compromises we have to make to actually get things done. Uh, maybe not exactly where we always want to be. Uh, we get beat up a lot in public meetings. Um, and we try to process the, the things that are occurred through anger and frustration and the, the negatives, and we channel that into a vision of getting certain things done. And it was a, Barry, I gotta say, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, walk through an incredible space. It took my breath away. It reminded me of what uh, makes California and Los Angeles living so grand. And to think of generations of young people who will see the quotations written, the, the Neutra quotation outside that is in in steel and the words that are inside a library. You thought of generations of generations of, of families and young people and seniors and little kids coming into a space that will define their futures for years to come. We hear so often what government does badly, um, that it is a bad force. There's a great uh, poll that Pew Charitable Trust did years ago, about three years ago, uh, that asked uh, older Americans whether they agreed that we had the government or our government and then ask the same thing of the young generation. And for older Americans who had fought in World War II and gone through struggle and economic depression in many cases, over 80% of them called it our government, and the remainder said the government. For young people, it was flipped. We've grown up with the propaganda of like, you know, government is a force for bad, um, you know, what can it do for us except impose taxes and do the wrong things. And so young people actually said the opposite. It's the government, not our government. And it shows us how far we have to go. Because in a democracy, government is our government, whether you like it or not. It is us. It is a reflection of us. It is an embodiment of our highest ideals. And it is also an embodiment of, you're talking about what it's like in city council, of group therapy. I mean, it is all of us trying to get together and get along and figure out a way to move forward. You all give doubly of yourselves. You give by the profession that you have chosen. And I've loved being visited by the American Institute of Architects. Every time you come to City Hall, I love speaking to you at, at breakfast programs, et cetera. And I loved a few years ago, you said, we need more commissioners. And look around, from people who serve on their HPOZ boards, their neighborhood councils, who are city commissioners. Uh, my god, the president of the Planning Commission is actually an architect. Um, we have really made tremendous strides. Not because we were all visionaries, but because you demanded it. You said, we are here, we are present, we are engaged. And you don't just give in one way, you give in two ways. You give professionally, and then all of you volunteer to do something further in your community, um, in the associations that make Los Angeles work, and to get past what LA is so good at doing, which is saying what we are against, to begin articulating what we are for. Um, if you take even this model as, as an example, it is very 
easy for some of us to sit back and say what we would like to see of our future, to build those buildings and have ideas of what zoning should look like and enforcement from the city. But out there in Los Angeles, most people turn out to say what they are against. We can get 200 people out to a meeting to oppose a project, but if we all went into our neighborhood and said, let's get it together and take the, the bull by the horns and decide what this community will look like 20 years from now, you get two or three people, or just a conversation among ourselves that are professionals. Why the second piece of what you do is so important is because here, in one of the largest chapters, AA chapters, 3,000 people here in Los Angeles, part of an organization that's been doing this for 150 years, you now are able to pull other people in, your neighbors. You're not just an architect, you're somebody who's a commissioner or who's serving as a resident on a board. You are um, a tenant, you are a homeowner. You are the people who are actually of this city. Uh, you are our city, not the architects. And I want to just say on behalf of the city how grateful I am for both of that service, for things like what Barry has done, um, pulling off beautiful buildings, giving us advice, our design review committee, which was started by Mike Wu and continued by Jackie Goldberg, and which we have in Hollywood, which means every project has to sit between, uh, sit down among a group of peers and hear those sometimes difficult conversations, but get that feedback from people who live in the area. And I know Jackie and Pablo Ruiz are, are here, Ryan Spruston, Christophe Kornberg, uh, Barry I mentioned as well, Christine Van Cleve. I want to thank all of you who serve on our design review uh, committee, and I think it's a real model for what we should have in every neighborhood of this city. And I'll close with this. This is a moment in Los Angeles' history. And if you think way back, our first architects came to this city. Um, they weren't physical architects, but maybe conceptual ar architects in 1769. Footsteps away from here. We could all take about a five minute walk to where the Arroyo Seco <coughs> and the Los Angeles Rivers meet. And that's where Father Juan Crespi and a few other Franciscans came um, on one day in 1769. And they looked up at this view right up that way, with, where Elysian Park is now on one side and, and Mount Washington and Glassell Park on the other. And they named the river El Rio de Nuestra Señora de Los Angeles de Porzuncula. It was the river of Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels of the small portion. Because that day was St. Fr Francis's feast day. And it reminded them of that beautiful land next to the uh, church in Assisi, where St. Francis used to go to find peace and quiet. And they christened what this place was to become. And they said, one day a great mission will be built here. But unlike the rest of California, for better or for worse, there was never a mission built in Los Angeles. It was founded as a pueblo instead, a, a civic enterprise, the first Spanish town in California. And as we cut forward to the history of today, footsteps away from those ghosts that are around us, the architecture of this city needs so much help. But this is a moment when we're building again, even in tough economic times, when you look at the schools that we're building and we look at the the renovations we are doing, the unleashing of the river again from whence we were born. This is a moment for us to make sure that we connect with one another, because too many of those conversations are happening not together. We have communities where this building is sprouting up and we're building one thing and another. Uh, the library in Silver Lake is also great because it has a conversation with the neighborhood, but we've all driven by new buildings that seem to be out of context. And yet at the moment when we're doing all of this construction and all this reimagining, you all are what connects us and gives us some hope of that vision going forward. Um, 25 years from now, we'll look back and say these were amazing times that we lived through. And they're amazing times not just because of the buildings we built, but because of the people and the activism of the architects who became not just professionals, but became Angelinos of the highest degree. So I want to thank you for that, and I'll turn the program back over. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much. That's okay. You have what? I'm happy to answer questions, but 